Hi, I'm the project lead behind Mordhow. I'm here to talk about the game, why we're making it, and why we need your help. Mordhau is a multiplayer melee game. It's about cool battles and tense moments. The combat is deep and the techniques you can learn are many. The battles range from duels all the way to large open skirmishes of up to 64 players with horses, siege engines and castles to be stormed. If you prefer to shoot at enemies from afar, we've got that too. Or just lay waste to them from the safety of your catapult. The player will offer their services as a blade for hire to one of the two mercenary companies in a fictional but grounded in reality war-torn world. While fighting, they will amass fortunes with which they can unlock new equipment and customization options as well as keep track of detailed stats and leaderboards. We're a 10-person international team, driven by our passion for melee games and the medieval era. We've accumulated thousands of hours of playtime in similar titles and are using this experience to further evolve the genre. What you see before you is the result of a year and a half of development cemented by a year of design and prototyping before we even started. This long prototyping period has allowed us to refine the mechanics and get rid of absurd and undesirable cases that are common for games like ours where collisions are calculated in real time. We want fights to look like fights without the endless spinning and back twisting that is common in some games of this genre. Freedom of expression is a key part of the game, from how you fight to how your character looks. Mordhau features extremely detailed customization options that range from the type of body to facial features and even full-on face sculpting. On top of that, it includes deep armor and equipment customization where you can choose individual parts that make up your suit, color them, pick emblems and ultimately create your desired weapon as well, where you can swap out various blades, guards, grips and so on. We're on Kickstarter because we want to make the best game we possibly can. Unfortunately, this has its costs. From renting servers, attending trade shows, voice acting, marketing, and getting more help on board, the costs just pile up. We want to ship a game that feels finished when it is released, but we want to keep working on it afterwards. We have big plans and a long road ahead of us, even after the finish line. Thank you for your support and make sure to tell your friends about our campaign. In this update, we will be looking at some of the combat mechanics in Mordhau. As a disclaimer, keep in mind that this is pre-alpha footage. Much of the content is subject to change and all sounds are placeholders that we intend to replace in the final product. The combat is the absolute core of this game. It is something we've prototyped and tested over more than a year to make sure it is designed to encourage fights that look like fights and not ballet auditions. <laughs> that it is easy to pick up and difficult to master and that it works smoothly online. The controls are the first step. Since tastes differ, we plan to offer a variety of control schemes that will make those with experience in previous Melee games feel at home. In this video, we will be describing the control scheme that we're originally designing for and that feels the most organic. Besides the standard FPS movement controls, with the left mouse button the player can perform a cut. The cut is a good sweeping attack which can also be angled by moving the mouse in the desired direction before pressing the button. This results in cuts from below, above, left or right or really any angle you want. The scroll wheel performs a thrust. 
Now, just like the cut, the thrust can also be angled with the mouse. Attacks can be chained into combos, which is especially useful when trying to recover from a miss that would otherwise leave you defenseless. The right mouse button is used to execute a parry. A successful parry must be aimed at the opponent's weapon. Blocking high if the blow is coming from below is not going to work. The second ingredient to a successful parry is timing. The parry only lasts a split second and leaves you exposed after that duration if it failed to block anything. A successful parry will also drain stamina. If you are not careful, you may end up getting disarmed by your opponent if your stamina runs out. After parrying, the defender can perform a repost, which can then be parried by the enemy in turn. The game features real-time attack collision detection. There is never any lock-on and the player can adjust attacks while they're happening, allowing, for example, to reposition a strike aimed at the foot into one that will hit the head. What you hit does matter. If the opponent is not wearing a helmet but is otherwise well armored, it is better to strike at the unarmored head. The turning rate during attacks is limited and cannot be influenced by increasing mouse sensitivity. So what happens when two players both attack? Well, if one player manages to land the blow first, the opponent will flinch and fumble their attack, preventing double hits. However, when two attacks that are fully committed touch, they end in a clash. Now from a clash, new attacks can be started by both players if they're quick to act. This leads to extremely fast exchanges that are chaotic because both players act at the same time, trying to squeeze a hit on the other person, but also trying to protect themselves from the opponent's weapon. Attacks can also be used defensively to block an attack. This is called chambering and is very difficult to perform. The defender must mirror the opponent's attack type and angle a fraction of a split second before the opponent's attack lands. This immensely difficult move is rewarded by leading to a very quick attack at the cost of no stamina. If the opponent is quick on his feet, he can either parry the incoming attack or even counter chamber it. Chamber exchanges can be spiced up through the use of attack morphing, which changes a cut into a thrust or vice versa to throw off the opponent's counter chamber attempt. There's also a key with which the player can kick. Kicking prevents movement for the duration of the kick. If the kick lands, it will stun the opponent, leaving them wide open and unable to defend themselves against the next attack. To defend against a kick, perform a kick yourself or simply stay out of its range. The player can always cancel their attack before it is fully committed. Cancelling acts like a glue for the mechanics in Mordhau. It can be used both offensively as a feint to bait a parry or defensively as an attack cancel that can be turned into a parry. It can even be used in chamber exchanges or to recover from a missed attack. Every weapon in the game has an alternate mode of use. A big sword can be gripped further up the blade in what is known as half-sorting. Some swords may be flipped around, resulting in a Mordhau grip that can deal more damage to armor. A warhammer has two sides and a poleaxe does as well. A halberd's shaft can be gripped closer to the head to give it more maneuverability. Some smaller weapons can instead be thrown and if you're on the receiving end of one of these you can parry them or if you really want to prove a point you can bat them away with an attack. But what we really think sets the combat apart is how all those things we've just covered play together. Interaction is at the absolute core of Mordhau. Everything flows into everything. Every action can be combined, cancelled, turned into another, and the possibilities to create your own plays are limitless. But at least now that you've seen some of the mechanics, what can players do with them? Let's take a simple scenario. Imagine two unskilled fighters having a go at each other. It's slow and clumsy, so let's spice things up with some reposts. And finally, let's swap these parries with chambers. We've gone from a series of slow, clumsy exchanges to an incredibly fast-paced fight, and it's all in the hands of the players. This is precisely what we set out to do with the mechanics, a game where the combat is highly dependent on how the players express themselves.
Of course, this game does not only feature melee combat. There is ranged combat such as bows and crossbows, as well as siege engines such as ballista and catapults. And we haven't even talked about shields yet. We will not go in depth about how those work in this video, but we will probably elaborate on these in the future. Finally, before we end the video, it is important to mention some of the feedback regarding combat you've given us since our last video. You mentioned you wanted more realistic dismemberment, and we've made it more accurate. Precise joint locations need to be hit, and the cut needs proper edge alignment. Dismemberment should not be something that occurs constantly, but we don't want the game to feel bland, so we've added partial dismemberment. In other words, gruesome wounds that show broken joints and slit throats. There have also been mentions of armor not being protective enough, and the damage model has had some changes. A sword deals less damage to armored opponents, while a hammer is more effective at the job. Keep in mind, however, that this game is based around quickly dispatching enemies, so a single hit more means a lot in terms of gameplay. The game does not feature wrestling that would be used in real armored combat as it is difficult to make fluid gameplay around such mechanics and makes it impossible to deal with multiple opponents. So we treat armor as more resistant but still defeatable. This is by no means a realistic depiction of armor, which also brings us to the next point, realism. While we promise you won't find giant plastic swords in this game, it is nonetheless not a realistic depiction of historical European martial arts or HEMA. We're big fans of HEMA and we always find some similarities between historical techniques and some of the things you can do in this game, but in the end we're primarily aiming at a fun experience of learning a deep, fluid combat system that can be elegantly expressed using conventional controls. Thank you for watching and thank you for all the support you've already shown us. Stay tuned for more videos about Mordhau in the future.